感想がああああ,あ,あ Let's sing hymn number 399. The Word of Life is Genesis chapter 9, verse 28 through 32. Genesis chapter 5. Verse 28 through 32. Genesis chapter 5, verse 28 through 32. Lamech lived 182 years and became the father of a son. Now he called his name Noah, saying, This one will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands arising from the ground which the Lord has cursed. The Lamech lived 595 years after he became the father of Noah, and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. Noah was 500 years old, and Noah became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. At this time, there was special praise by the United Young Adults and followed by our missionary Vicky Park's lecture. Thank、you 
할렐루야. 감사합니다. Thank you very much. Today, I'd like to share grace with you with the lecture title, The Passing on Faith Across Generations. Um, when we think about the judgment of flood that took place in the days of Noah, we think of uh, judgment and destruction. But was God's interest upon the people who were wiped away and perished in the flood? Or was his interest focused on the families of Noah who were saved? Yes. The central message of Noah's days of judgment of the flood was not judgment, but in salvation. And I pray that even though our families, our workplaces, our church may encounter this flood, I hope you believe that the central message of these situations is not in the destruction, but in the salvation. Noah was a very special person who lived at the turning point of two eras before and after the flood. He was a person who passed on to um, his faith down to his next generations. And we can see the Bible actually had a few special mechanism of who uh, to sh that is in the Bible to show how special um, Noah is. So there's unique characteristics of the record of Noah. This is not found in a lecture note, and I'd like to start with this as an introduction. First of all, in the genealogy of Noah, the meaning of his name is expounded. Um, the, a pattern of Genesis 5 genealogy always goes like this. And somebody had the birth, of, gave birth to somebody at this age and um, lived how many more years while giving birth to sons and daughters? That's the pattern. But for Noah's record, it's different. Genesis chapter 5, verse 28 to 29, um, Lamech actually speaks in the genealogy. He actually speaks. Lamech, at 182, um, he uh, became father of Noah, saying, This one will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands arising from the ground which the Lord has cursed. So here, the father is expounding, interpreting the name of Noah, and he's the only one who actually expounds the name of his son. So this draws our attention to know that this name is very, very important. Why is the word um, rest very important, right? Um, first, um, first, a special feature about this is that after he became the father of a son, but in Genesis 5, the pattern, the genealogy, is that um, they give birth, let's, for example, uh, uh, let's say uh, Enoch lived how many years became the father? became the father of who, right? They all became, they became father of so-and-so. But for Genesis chapter 5, verse um, 21, it says Enoch uh, became father of Methuselah. Verse 25, um, became father of Lamech. But for Noah, it says he became the father of a son. That's a very special. And thirdly, there's no mention that he died for Noah. In Genesis 5, verse 27, for Methuselah, it ends with died. Genesis 5, verse 31, for Lamech, so he lived 70, 77 years, 777 years and died. But for Noah's case, in Genesis 5, verse 32, Noah was 500 years old. And we know that he died at 930, but there's no mention in Genesis 5 genealogy that Noah died. Noah, uh, Genesis 5, verse 32 is a final verse in Genesis 5 genealogy. It says Noah was 500 years old, and Noah became the father of Shem and Ham and Japheth. That's it. It doesn't say that Noah died. Why did God hid these uh, special uh, mechanisms in the genealogy? Um, and we have a treasure hunt for kids. Um, they uh, are going to look for these little um, uh, treasures like hidden everywhere. And so they get so overjoyed when they find this um, uh, treasures, right? But like that, uh, if the children, there's a one that they don't find it, then we just give out you know, one so they can actually experience the joy of finding a treasure, right? Likewise, um, God has hidden these treasures in the genealogies. Um, 
Um, and nobody knew about this, and God hid all of this, lest Satan would find out. But our founding pastor, Reverend Evan Park, who thoroughly read the Bible over 1,800 times, he excavated, excavated all these treasures, and they had presented to all of us. And these are the treasures of God that he has exposed to us. So I'd like to um, invite you to actually dig in, to dig these treasures, right? Let's start with the first point. Um, the six patriarchs who passed on their faith to Noah. What kind of treasures are hidden here? Now, Genesis 5 genealogy, um, the sum up of the genealogy is like this. It can be demonstrated in these bars. And now, this is written according to the age of Adam. So everything is standardized upon the ears of Adam. And based on Adam's ears, Noah was born in 1056 Adamic year. And above Noah, there are nine patriarchs. So three of them, um, Noah did not meet uh, directly because they died before Noah died. So let's take a look at this line is Noah's birth. Now, Adam, Adam died at the age of 930 because he died at the uh, 930 Adamic year and Noah was born in 1056 in Adamic year. So Adam died 126 years before Noah's birth. So Noah never met Adam directly. Let's take a look at Seth. Seth died at uh, one, uh, 1042 Adamic year. And so he died 14 years before Noah's birth. So Noah never met Seth directly. And lastly, Enoch. Enoch was transfigured at 987 Adamic year. He was transfigured 69 years before Noah's birth, so Noah never met Enoch directly. So Adam, Seth, and Enoch, except these three, Enoch, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Methuselah, and Lamech, um, these are the people who transmitted their faith to Noah. These six patriarchs, the common feature of these um, uh, patriarchs, now, the red line here is the death of Adam. Um, so you can see all of these six patriarchs actually lived contemporaneously with Noah. Now, the next, this red line is um, Noah's birth year. So you can see that these six patriarchs were still alive at the time of birth of Noah. So they also lived contemporaneously with Noah. So even though Noah did not get to meet Adam, Seth, and Enoch, but these six patriarchs existed with Noah, they became the stepping stones of faith to transmit faith all the way from Adam to Noah. What was a faith of Adam that was transmitted all the way to Noah? First, Adam's faith. Now, Noah was the um, very... Now, Noah um, actually heard about, uh, 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 no, everybody except Noah, they all lived contemporaneously with Adam. So they heard directly from Adam exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden, um, how the sh um, cunning serpent came and uh, made him fall, but how the life was so beautiful before the fall. And for nearly 900 years, uh, Adam must be so grieving, uh, so sorrowful about the fact that he lost his opportunity to seize the eternal life had he obeyed the word of God. And therefore, he fervently um, relayed this to his descendants. And now, Noah's father, Lamech, actually was the last patriarch who lived with Adam for 56 contemporaneous years. So his immediate father, Noah's immediate father, Lamech, probably made the greatest influence upon Noah's life. And you see, uh, Lamech's faith, uh, Lamech passed on Adam's faith, and the evidence for that comes from Genesis 5, verse 28 through 29, which says, the Lord, uh, uh, this one will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands, arising from the ground which the Lord has cursed. Now, the cursing of the ground took place all the way in the days of Noah and Adam, the Garden of Eden. And the fact that Lamech knew about this, that means he received it directly from Noah. And here, Lamech confesses that this one will give us rest from our work. And 
And this is referring to the promise of the seed of the woman that Adam received back in Genesis 3 verse 15. Now Lamech, who comes hundreds of years later, still held on to this promise that Adam had received, and he fervently believed in the birth of Messiah. He fervently awaited and hoped for the Messiah's coming. And this tells us that Lamech's days were also filled with the great violence and the wickedness and sinfulness of mankind. And because Lamech hoped it so much, and indeed he has his son Noah, and just as Lamech hoped, Noah overcame the flood and uh, bestowed salvation, brought salvation to his family. Indeed, he became the rest for the mankind. And also you see Genesis 5, verse 28, so Lamech became the father of a son. It doesn't say the name, but it's the uh, name of a son. Um, this word son actually gives a very special meaning, like a very unique son, like a begotten son, the only begotten son. So he hoped that Noah would put an end to the death that was pronounced to mankind. In John chapter 3, verse 6, it says, God so loved this world and gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but receive eternal life. God so loved this world that in order to give the eternal life that Adam lost, that God, for this purpose, gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So as a symbol that I will surely save you and give you the eternal life, as a token of the, a gift God gave Noah. But all of that is encapsulated in one expression, a son. The Lame became father of a son. This is really an amazing word. Uh, even if we were Christians for our entire life, um, we um, would not ever find out how profound this is. It's like there's a blanket covering this expression, a son. And as we uncover the blanket, there's this great um, uh, earthen vessel of treasure. And for some reason, we have received these great blessings of this treasure appearing right before our eyes, right? So um, I pray that we'll continue to faithfully deliver this amazing treasure to the rest of the world so that the water covering the sea, um, as the knowledge of the Lord covering the world as the water covers the sea will hasten. Now let's go to Enoch's faith. Um, these patriarchs not only transmitted Adam's faith in Noah, but also Enoch's faith. Um, you see in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, um, some evidences that he received the faith of Enoch. Genesis 6 verse, 6 verse 9 says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. And this is also the same expression it's describing Enoch. Genesis 5 verse 21 through 22 says that Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah. Walking with God cannot be a walk if you miss a single day, right? But Enoch walked with God this long years of 300 years. And when we look at Enoch's uh, faith of walking with God, he was born into a uh, believer's family, right? From long time ago, this father, grand, great grandfather Adam um, shared a teaching to the, all the rest of the um, patriarchs. Enoch also received it for the 65 years of his life. For the first 65 years of his life, he heard the same message, but he didn't really believe in God fully until when he had Methuselah. His name, Methuselah, means that there will be judgment when he dies. From then on, for 300 years afterwards, he walked with God. But still, 300 years is a long time, right? How was he able to have this unwavering, undoubting faith that was fully convicted in the end time? The man can have the greatest conviction when he sees it himself with his two own eyes, right? In Jude chapter 1, verse 14 through 15, Enoch saw the second coming of the Lord. It says that men, um, um, it was also about these men that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied saying, behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all, all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds which they have done in an ungodly way. So we see this um, a clear uh, faith, a sure, assuring faith of the end time that Enoch had 
was also transferred all the way over to Noah. And because of that, Noah also walked with God. As Noah was building the ark, he probably became more clear that end is really coming. He probably thought about the fact that the moment I finish the ark, that will mean the end of the world. So he had also the end time faith. As a result of having the end time faith and walk with God, he Enoch was able to have expiration. Uh, Enoch. Um, was transfigured. That means he had eternal life through transfiguration. At the same way, Noah survived the end time. He became the remnants. So the two people in the Genesis 5 genealogy, which says there's, which who does not have this expression died, is only Enoch and Noah. And so this is an evidence that Noah um, received the faith of Enoch. So it's very important that we transmit uh, faith down well, but inheriting faith is also important. There has to be good uh, passing down. There's good inheriting. So Noah became a, a link, connecting link to the era before the flood and the era after the flood. If after the flood, if Noah uh, gave up on his special mission and um, he uh, always played in the world, then what would happen, right? But because his predecessors passed on good faith to Noah, he was able to keep his faith and he was able to open the channel for the coming of the Messiah. Yeah, right? So every patriarch, they were the minorities who passed on the real faith down to the next generation. So because they were keeping this orthodox faith, a lot of people were probably talking to them about how long are you going to hold on to the ancient gods? You know, and there is a new season uh, item, new idol, um, and then you know, we should go after this new season, right? The, the newest idol, uh, new, the newest god, and that god is so cool. Why don't you just keep up with the trend? Why do you want to stick with the ancient days, old god, Jehovah, right? But you see, this each patriarch kept the faith, and each person became a stepping stone to transmit the faith down to the next generation. This tells us that each and every one of us played a significant role in God's work of redemptive history. Please don't think that, what can I do? I'm just a one person. No, that's not the case, because through you, you one person, God wants to pass down faith to the next generation. And that's how he led on his movement of redemptive history. But unfortunately, although there are a lot of people in that time of Noah, not everybody received the faith. In other words, there's so many people who failed to inherit faith. Uh, these patriarchs, they gave birth to many other siblings. They did not think that, okay, I'm going to pass down faith only to Noah. No, Noah was not the only begotten son. He had many other siblings, and Genesis 5 verse 30 says this. Lamech lived 595 years after he became the father of Noah. He had other sons and daughters. You see, they all received the same transmission of faith from their father Lamech. They all heard about their God, but even though they knew, none of them believed. That means we can know this because none of Noah's siblings entered the ark. Genesis 7 verse 7, Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him entered the ark because of the water of the floods. Noah and his sons, three sons, Shem, Ham, Japhet, and their three wives. So there's total eight people went into the ark, but there's no mention about his siblings entering the ark. So we can um, know that the duration of the art construction was about 70 or 80 years. So Lamech, um, for the, his latter um, years of 65 to 75 years, he actually worked uh, to build the ark with his uh, uh, Noah. But all the other siblings did not help. Says, Brother Noah, what are you doing? It's not raining. Do you think it's going to rain? Are you really insane? So when they mocked Noah, they, even if they weren't able to approach their father Lamech directly, but as they approach Noah this way, they're also mocking their father as well. Noah's siblings were right 
standing right in front of the channel of salvation, but still they did not choose to enter into this channel of salvation. There's the same thing. When Jesus was hung on the cross, there were two uh, criminals crucified on the both right and left. They're so close to their channel of salvation. When Jesus prayed, Father, please forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. When both criminals heard this prayer of our Lord Savior on the cross, the thief on the left, they heard it, but they did not believe. He did not believe. Only the thief on the right heard how this man in this extreme suffering able to intercede for other people. He recognized that he was a Savior, and so he received this promise of entering into paradise. So he entered into the channel of salvation. They're both in the proximity of the salvation, but they one chose the path, the other declined it. Same way. And Lamech and Methuselah's siblings, Genesis 5, verse 21 and 22, um, Methuselah gave uh, Enoch had other siblings, Genesis 5, verse 25 to 26. Also, um, Methuselah gave birth to Lamech, and he had other sons and daughters. And so their other sons and daughters, so they had many sons and daughters, and they lived hundreds of years. Mutsela lived 782 more years to have more sons and daughters. You can imagine how many people were there at the time. So they were all living together contemporaneously, and there's massive population. By the time Noah was born, there were six preceding patriarchs. So as I prepared the lecture, I, um, I looked up in Korean term, you know, what do you call the preceding uh, next to the grandfather, the great grandfather, and great great father, and great great grandfather, and great 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 grandfather? I never heard of these expressions in Korean terms because there's never a uh, people who live up to six generations together in one house, right? But back in those days, there's so many relatives, so many cousins. Right now, if we say uh, they are. Um, uh, let's say the mother is a, a, a daughter of a seven girls family and dad is a son of a, like, a, you know, like 10 sons in the family. And when they have family reunion, I mean, that's a massive amount of people gathering together in the family, right? Even in, in, in today's world like that, we say, wow, that's a big family. But when we talk about these families before the flood, I mean, these are a massive amount of number of families living together. So these number of the people listened to the same message, but they did not believe. They were contemporary members of these amazing patriarchs, and they declined the message. They declined to believe, so they perished. Only few survived. And there are also many children who were born after our beloved founding pastor, Reverend Evan Park, went to heaven. And even though they never met him in person, but through you who have contemporary, contemporaneously lived with him, if you pass down that faith well down to next generation, I believe our children, our next generation, will actually become um, really a people of wonderful faith, and they'll not become the last, but become the first, right? And my self-testimonial, uh, the testimony is that I'm 35 years old and I was born into an unbelieving family. I met God for the first time when I was 25 years. I was invited to a church and I found the church to be the best place to fall asleep. It was very quiet and there's a nice music playing for you. So I was like, wow, church is a wonderful place to fall asleep. And somebody encouraged me, why don't you try reading the Bible? And, and there was a grace that, wow, the Bible, you can't really understand this. It makes sense. And I didn't know how great that blessing was at the time. And I realized, oh, if you just read the Bible, you can believe. So I have many other friends that who did not believe. I encouraged them, why don't you read the Bible? I can now believe. And my friends told me that this like ancient myth, like the Greek myth. So can you believe that the Red Sea really divided? And so uh, I realized that, wow, well, this is a very special grace that I received. And I was in the church for about a year, but I left the church because it was a mega church. But the pastor said, did Elijah die or was transfigured? Elijah was transfigured, right? But even though this is a mega church pastor, he taught that Elijah died. And, and the reason the numbers in the Bible don't match is as a proof that there are many errors in the Bible. 
So when I heard this, I left the church. Um, and I was looking for church to prove that the Bible is infallible word of God. And at the end of the journey, I came upon p y o n g g a n g j i Church. Is there error in the Bible? Uh, please know that it's special grace that you know the Bible is without error. They all scriptures inspired by God. You are able to believe in that. That is a, a super uh, blessing. The fact that um, a, a church that really teaches that the Bible is infallible word of God and not only teach that but backs it all up by you know, presenting the Bible to be the true. And I believe you are really um, in a most blessed church. So when I finally came to the church was 2014 in, this, in the fall season. And... Um, I am probably the first minister who did not meet Reverend Evan Park, but I have an inheritance in his History Redemption series. And I was reading the History Redemption series. I was so um, uh, shocked. And whenever I listened to the History Redemption lectures, I was like, wow, the word is so true. And so our uh, founding pastor always said that Uh, you don't have to do anything else. Just teach the History of Redemption series. I don't even know the Bible really well. I haven't even read the Bible once um, when I came to the history, uh, when I came to this church. But because uh, Reverend Evan Park read the Bible more than 1,800 times, I was able to feed upon this through the History of Redemption series because it's written by Reverend Evan Park who read the Bible so many times. So I think there's, this is a, a speed course. Um, and so because the The word is so good. The trials were very strong, too. So God gives grace, and there's trial. The grace and trial and grace and trial. Um, that was a race that I have uh, I ran thus far. But the redemptive history, the word is so delicious. My mouth has become so upscale in the word, and I cannot go anywhere else. Because the word is living and active, um, the word of redemptive history continues to work. And please believe in this. For a lot of people are worried, wow, there, we don't have any more Uh, we found the founding pastor was not with us anymore. Wow, who's going to be a next evangelist? And I heard his message, you, you will be the evangelist. And it, um, I was called by God. It's not that I wanted to do this, but there was a calling in the midst of a prayer. And um, the word of redemptive history by the power of the Holy Spirit has called me. And I know that we should not worry, because for sure there will be a, a many more ministers, many more stewards, many more servants of the word of redemptive history will arise. So I believe um, the how Um, a lot of people are blessed by the fact that um, Adam and Lamech lived 56 contemporaneous years, but I am more blessed by the fact Noah never met Adam, and yet he was able to receive the uh, faith. And also, in the days of Jesus, there was a person who never met Jesus but became a disciple, and that is Luke. Although Luke did not get to meet Jesus um, directly, but he received the uh, faith from his apostles. And so I believe there will be a lot more people in the generations like Noah and like Luke, not only in, the, um, in the Korea, but also in um, all over the world. There are many teachers of redemptive history rising right now. Yesterday we witnessed that. You know, there are history redemption speech speakers, right? The young generation is coming to now speak and teach the redemptive history. Even though our children may have met um, our, you know, profound fathers of faith, like um, in Noah's days, um, the preceding patriarchs became the stepping stones so that Noah could have this faith. I pray that we will also become those spiritual patriarchs, stepping stones to um, pass down the faith our next generation. Uh, point number three, Noah passed on the faith that he had inherited. After the flood, Noah became the second progenitor of mankind because everybody was perished in the flood. So everybody was born after the um, judgment of the flood. They all are descendants of Noah. 
And Noah now uh, became the, the oldest patriarch, surviving patriarch in the generation. Now he has a mission to pass on the faith that he received down to the next generation. He did not only inherit the faith, now he himself had to become the stepping stone of the faith. Now he um, was able to pass on the faith successfully, and you know this, because his faith was transmitted all the way to Abraham. Noah and Abraham lived 58 years contemporaneously. Genesis 9 verse 28 says Noah lived 350 more years after the flood. Now Abraham was born 292 years after the flood. So if you subtract 292 from 350, we see that Abraham lived 58 contemporaneous years with Noah. Did Abraham really meet Noah during the 58 years? Um, as we saw in the first lecture when God called Abraham from the Ur of the Chaldeans and led him to Haran. Um, Haran, we know that it was actually established uh, by the one of the faithful patriarch Eber and known as the kingdom of Ebla. So it was very likely that Noah, um, uh, uh, Abraham met Noah and Eber and other spiritual patriarchs, faithful patriarchs, and received the faith. And we'd like to um, see uh, the evidences that Abraham inherited faith of Noah. First is righteousness. Righteousness is believing the promise of God even though you are in the situation the promise doesn't seem to be possible. Uh, Noah finished building the ark even in a situation that seemed impossible. That's why numerous occasions God records Noah was righteous. Genesis 6 verse 9, the Noah is righteous. Genesis 7 verse 1, I've seen your righteousness before me in this generation. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7, um, Noah was heir of righteousness following faith. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 5, Noah who preached righteousness. But God also reckoned righteousness to Abraham as well. That means Noah also inherited the righteousness of Noah. Genesis 15 verse 6 says that Abraham believed in the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Abraham, when he was 84 years old, he still had no child. And then God told him though, still your children will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And he believed. He was in a situation that seemed important possible and nevertheless nevertheless he still believe in the promise of God you see, you see there has a passing of faith of Noah all the way down to Abraham we too are um, uh, uh, we too are encountering many situations it seems impossible there seems to be no solution but for example we wonder if it, will all nations really come I think the na all na I know that all nations are already running to us, and I know I am one of them. Even though it seems impossible, if we believe in the Almighty God, I believe that God will reckon that to be righteousness for us as well. Second is blameless. Blameless. Blameless is uh, uh, striving with a complete focus on one thing and eventually obey completely. Okay, you focus on one thing with all your heart and mind and soul so that you can obey perfectly in the end. Genesis 6 verse 9 says Noah was righteous. He was blameless in his generation. Um, many people probably mock Noah saying that it's not going to rain. Look at the sun outside. It has never rained before. Um, can there be flood? You sure God told you this? Just like the serpent uh, enticed the woman. Um, many people try to sow the seed of doubt in Noah. But Noah did not waver in his faith in the word of God and he obeyed perfectly and finished the ark. So Genesis 6 verse 22 it says Noah did everything according to the, what the Lord said. And Genesis chapter 7 verse 5 that Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. And likewise, God is waiting for us to, uh, to finish building the spiritual ark. Of course, this does not happen in a short time. It will take a long time. Psalm 90 verse 10, that we can live at the most 70 or 80 years. Just as Noah spent 70 or 80 years, I believe in our lifetime, 
throughout our lifetime, we're building this spiritual ark. And while we do so, Satan will continuously try to thwart our faithfulness to God by sowing the seed of doubt. But just as Noah overcame all the doubt and finished building the ark, I believe I pray that all of us will also overcome all the temptations and the doubts and finish building the spiritual ark so we can hasten the completion of the redemptive history. And God also commanded Abraham to be blameless. We see that in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, and Abraham was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. So be blameless. Not only blameless, but but he also required no Abraham to walk with him. He says, walk before me. If you see in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, um, Noah uh, walked with God. And we see that God was also requiring the same faith of walking with God from Abraham too. Genesis 17, verse 1 says, walk before me. Walk before me. Walk before me. Um, a lot of... So walk before me is a, uh, a God required Abraham to also walk with God. And just like Noah, Abraham also walked with God and was blameless. In the same chapter, God commands circumcision for all males in his family. And we know that Abraham immediately obeyed. In Genesis chapter 17, Verse 23. So we see um, after God said, You walk before me and be blameless in Genesis 17, verse 1. But in verse 22, we see when he finished talking with him, when God finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Then, right after then, Abraham took Ishmael his son and all the servants who were born in his house and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's household circumcised the flesh of the foreskin in the very same day. So we see in verse 23 begins with the word, the word then. Then it's a vav consecutive expression means as soon as God finished talking with Abraham, he immediately obeyed. So before this, there was a human thought, he delayed and disobeyed, but now just as God spoke with him on the very day, the very same day, without any delay, he obeyed. Before then, he was not blameless, but now he repented at God's command to be blameless, and he obeyed immediately, and so he became blameless before God. The third is reverence or fear. Reverence is hard wanting to hold on to and keep and defend the word to the very end with trembling heart. Whatever God said once, you want to hold, you hold on to it to the very end with trembling heart. So in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, um, Reverend Evan Park says the uh, uh, building material for Ark of the Covenant, uh, the Ark, was uh, 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 the gopher wood and the pitch. But one more thing was fear. Because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 says um, he, in reverence, prepared the Ark. So God did not appear to Noah many, many times whenever his faith uh, got weakened. He appeared again and built the ark to remind him. He did not do that. God said only once. And Noah still did not give up and ended up finishing the ark. And that's a proof that he held on to God's word and held on to the very end. And we call that reverence. And such a fearing faith, reverence faith, is transmitted all the way into Abraham because Abraham obeyed the command from God to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. How can any human being chop up his own son and burn it? burn him and to give to God, right? God told him to do this just once. And Abraham obeyed it with fearing, trembling heart. The moment um, uh, Abraham was about to um, kill his son Isaac, the moment God said in Genesis 22 verse 12, do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him, for now I know that you fear God. 
that's when God recognized that no, uh, Abraham too feared God. But the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, God said to Abraham to sacrifice an Isaac, it was to test him. It was to test him. There are also tests that require us to come up with a firm resolution of faith. And the God's command to Noah, God's command to Abraham is also to test us. But test, the purpose is not to give us hard time. The test is given so that we can have even more perfect faith, the perfect obedience. So when we pass through faith, we will be just like Noah and Abraham and receive recognition from God that we fear God. So let us not give up in the middle of our trials, but pass through to the very end and receive God's recognition that we also fear God. So from Adam to Enoch to Noah and to Abraham, the transmission of faith lasts for almost 200 years, for total 20 generations. But for another 2,000 years, the transmission of faith continues and Jesus Christ finally came. And then another 2,000 years of transmission of faith continued, and that faith has come to you and us, you and me. And as we become, um, we belong to Jesus Christ, we become the sons of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 says those who believe are sons of Abraham. And Galatians chapter 3 verse 29, if you belong to Christ, then you are then the sons of Abraham, heir according to the promise. And so every patriarch in this long journey of faith, they kept on their faith, they became the stepping stone of faith, to pass down their faith that they inherited, Jesus Christ would come. We were able to believe even meet in Jesus Christ because of what the patriarchs had done before his coming. So you see, for you and I to meet Jesus Christ for thousands of years before, they got his work through these numerous patriarchs and they held them up so they can keep their faith and become the stepping stones of faith and that faith transmitted all the way to the patriarchs and to Jesus Christ and now the faith has come to you and me. The faith that you and I received is a faith that had come from thousands of years ago. The faith from the redemptive history that God himself um, cultivated for us. In conclusion, until the second coming of the Lord is fulfilled on this earth, the genealogy of godly descendants must continue. In order for this to happen, this transmission of faith must never stop. And the days of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. This is referring to the second coming. We are living in this world like the days right before the judgment of the flood. And the only way we can survive is to continue to pass on faith in order to be this remnant to survive the judgment final judgment let us strive to receive the faith that's handed down to us and strive to pass down the faith to the next generation let us become the stepping stones of faith that will be laid up to the eternal kingdom of heaven let us pray. Our Father God, we thank you so much. What grace is this that you have called us as your chosen people so that for 6,000 years the patriarchs of faith have passed on the faith as they themselves become the stepping stones of faith. So now that we are able to meet Jesus Christ and receive that faith, Father, we pray that the faith will stop at us but will continue to be passed down through us to the next generation. We realize how precious the word of redemptive is true that you have trusted this church with. Father, help us really, truly fathom this, know its merit and worth, and really dedicate our lives to spread this word to the rest of the world. We thank you so much. We pray all of this in the loving Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. We were greatly blessed. Let's sing hymn number 539. Oh, God. 
청년연합 특종팀 찬양하게 하심에 감사드립니다. The young adult praise team gave thanksgiving offering, and Kang Songja gave thanksgiving offering for Father planning to bless us with Abraham. There's so many thanksgiving offerings, so I'm just going to have to call your name. Um, Kim Dewan, Park Jung Soo, Kim Myung, Kim Kyung Shin, Lee Dong Gun, Do Jin, Lee Joo Won, Kim Myung Soo, um, Reverend uh, uh, Yoo Sung Joon, Park Myung Soon, Yoon Kyung Hee, Kim Hyun Jung, Kim Eun Hee, Kim Baek Hee, Ko Min Joo, Kim Soo Chan, Kim Dong Joo Ha Soo Gi, Kim Jong Ho Ha Tae Rang, Kim Myung Kyu. Hyung Chan Mi Son, Song Bi Young, Bae Son Ja, Kim Jong Soon, Do Sang Jom, Yang Jae Nam, Kim Soon Hwan, Lee Soon Ja, Lee Chang Hyun, Lee Jong Hee, Jong Bu Ja, Hwan Lan Hee, Kwon Gi Hyun, Choi Hyun, Kwan Myung Hyun, Kyung Hee, Lee Gi Hyun, Won Jae Hyun, Che Mi Byung, Ha Mam Jo Mi Ok, Jong Soon Hong, Shin Mi Kyung Family, Kang In Soo, Jo Jong Soon, Choi Tok Soon, Kim Soo Seop, Kim Bo Gyu, 김정옥, 박길수, 박정옥, 박길수, 홍관표, 이영림, 박산준, 정주용, 박명수, 명근, 조순복, 이환예, 에반주스, 이옥경, 박정홍, 빈복경, 창민, 최숙자. They give all thanksgiving offerings. Now we have few announcements. We are having the summer conference here both in Yeoju and in Seoul. And I'd like to show you a um, few scenes from our brothers and sisters in Seoul. They are really working hard back in Seoul to uh, protect our church and uh, keep their posts. Uh, we um, ask all the male saints to not to go into Zion Church, Zion Sanctuary, um, second and fourth floor. And um, if please uh, sleep at the lodging that you registered for. Uh, Moria Sanctuary, uh, first floor is reserved for the female saints, and the second floor is for the male saints. And please don't bring up the car up to Moriah. Make sure that you park your car in the parking lot. We encourage all overseas guests um, to dine at the Shalom Cafe, the second floor, and is reserved for you. And there's children's pool open from 9 to 5 uh, today and tomorrow for free. You can also download all the lecture notes from the um, homepage as well. And please um, join all the snacks and ice cream and drinks. Uh, Beer Shiba, Men's Ministry, have provided many things for us. And also, we have a Kyobo um, bookstore here. Uh, they will offer a History Redemption series and the Modern History of Korea series at a discount price, 20% discount, and also Children's History Redemption series. Um, Bible study materials from 0 to 13 years old. I met Internet Ministry. Uh, they have uh, provided a special gift on Instagram. You can check in the Instagram uh, uh, site from July 30th, the last Lord's Day, up to this Thursday this week. You want to search Pyongyang Jail Church in Instagram. Um, the afternoon lecture will begin at 1.30. Uh, we will have a history redemption speech time. And so our young generation proclaiming the word of redemptive history is a very inspiring time. We will start at 1.30. An extra announcement from Beersheba. In men's ministry, they have a freshly um, cooked potatoes. <laughs> Please come and enjoy them. Uh, we have two more announcements. 
Um, it's for the seats. Like some people like reserve the seats, but they come in later. Um, and so if you have reserved a seat, that make sure you come early before the praise begins, okay? Um, otherwise, just don't reserve a seat and let other people sit in your seat. And secondly, uh, because the AC, some people complain is too cold, um, um, AC, uh, somebody's too hot. So usually in the front is very cold, the back is really hot. So let us uh, um, be considerate for one another. And so, so if you uh, uh, a, a, a if you think it's too cold or too hot, you know we are really in a luxurious environment compared to the days when founding pastor was with us, right? So let us um, keep the grace with us as we receive the word. Let's conclude with the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.